I asked the same question that I asked six years ago. Why me? Why did God choose me to do this? But in a different sense now. Because of everything that has happened the past six years. It's extremely rewarding finally seeing what my calling, what my purpose is. I could finally see everything coming together. I saw the bigger picture. Good morning guys, my name is Niels Engelbra here at Light Lounge Studio and with me today we've got Alvin, Ace and, and Stefan, guys, the new documentary coming out on Friday, Exciting super excited. Exciting times man. Finally. Finally, <laughs> after two years. Can you yeah. believe it? Yeah, Alvin? Yeah, I am very excited about this, I mean it's been two years since we filmed it Yeah. and um, so much has happened but we know that God's timing is perfect. Mm. Yeah. And um, I think all of us are just so excited just to see it actually. We've seen it probably, you know, 10, 20 times. Yeah, yeah. Um, Stefan, who's the director, he's seen mm. it 30 times even probably. I know there's, there's, there's still a couple of scenes that you always say, Listen, can you just take them out? Can you just take them out? <laughs> but, um, but it's final now. But it's final. Yeah. We can't take them out. Yeah. But yeah. two years, guys, it's yeah. been quite a journey. It's been hectic. Yeah. So, so yeah. basically, we just want to quickly. Uh, chat to you guys uh, how it all started where it all started the whole how we get to this point where the documentary is airing on Mnet so yeah Alvin so where did it start can you remember yeah so I think my my first memory of how everything came together was this was probably three years ago so a year before we actually started filming um, Jana reached out to me which is Nielis's wife and she was just like following what I was doing on social media, looking at the sport. And that was exactly when I just started my YouTube channel. And she just reached out and she said, listen, if you have anything that we can help you with, maybe camera gear, cleaning your cameras or anything like that, um, pop into the studio and, you know, maybe we can do something together. Yeah. And nothing actually happened for a year um, since she reached out, I forgot about it completely. It was one message and that was it. Um, and I just, I think I just gave a thumbs up. Um, and that yeah. was about it. And a year later, um, that's when Nielis actually stepped onto the scene. Yeah. So, so um, basically, for a year long, my wife is like, the Lord just told her, we need to do something with this guy. We need to reach yeah. out to him. We need to, this is just feeling in a spirit. There's something that we need to do with this guy. And I had no clue. And I was like, nah, no, nah, it's a random message to a guy. And, yeah. and basically it went on for a year. And she's like, then one night she woke up and said, the Lord just told her we need to do something. And then we, I reached out to you and yeah, and we met up for the first time. You tell, tell your story and they were like, we need to tell your story. Yeah. Because it's a very unique story. Um, yeah. So the thing is, like, w you get these messages oftentimes where people just reach out and they want to work together, they want to do something, mm -hmm. especially, I think, in the creative uh, scene, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, world. And you really need to discern, you know, what opportunities you're going to take. You can't just go and have a coffee and meet everyone and just take, you know, every single opportunity that you get. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I actually went to the studio and with an open mind. And then when we started talking, I just really felt that this is someone that I can relate to. And that's actually when we started becoming friends and started doing things together. And then yeah. started planning this, yeah. this documentary. Um, well, at that stage, it wasn't even a documentary. It just it was, was just to an, tell a story. It was just an idea. But yeah. something that I must add, um, so I've been in a wheelchair for eight years. But when I was in rehab eight years ago, I already had this sense in my heart, this dream in my heart that one, I was going to write a book and two, there was going to be a movie about, mm. um, I didn't exactly know what about, um, but it's just because what happened was so impactful and I felt that it needed to be shared. Sure. Yeah. Um, 
and that's how we came together. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. maybe and then, Stefan then, can then, then yeah. add. I, I reached out to my friend Stefan, yeah. which is a director, and I was like, man, this is an amazing story. You need to help me with this project. Yes, and, and then we, we decided to shoot like a, like a trailer. Yeah. Um, we went to the beach one morning, yeah. and all of a sudden it started raining. Didn't expect that at all. And then I'll never forget the double rainbow yeah. we got. And it was, I think, in that moment that we realized, listen, there's something, there's something special here. God is saying, And, yes, and the big this. thing uh, of, of that rainbow is, is exactly where we were, uh, uh, you were planning to swim to Robben Island. Yes. And that whole rainbow was covered from edge to edge. It was on this edge, it was Robben Island. And on that edge, he was sitting yes. on, and we, we carried you all the way up there to, to a, a yeah. hill on the beach. And that moment, like I've got goosebumps all over again, <laughs> where the rainbow is on the Robben Island, which is the giant. Mm. And on the other side is him sitting there, just praising uh, God for what's to yeah. come. And yeah, and that pilot actually, uh, uh, we realized yeah. there's something here. Yeah, then we decided let's, let's take it to the next level. Yeah, let's take it to the next level. Let's make a documentary. Because the previous year you tried to swim from Robben Island. Um, and well, was I, was, it? I was planning on doing Yeah, this. but the water yeah. wasn't warm enough. Am I right? Was yeah, that so in 2019, I wanted to swim uh, to Robin or from Robin Island to Bloberg, the eight kilometer stretch. And at that stage, there was no plan to film it or anything. It was just a challenge that I wanted to do, something that was on my heart. And then um, the, the conditions were just never lining up. Either it was too cold or the weather was, uh, you know, the, the, the sea was too rough. And it just never happened. Mm. And then we actually missed the window to, to swim in December. Um, in January, it never came about. People went on holiday and I kind of forgot about it. And then a few months later, we had lockdown. Yeah. Mm. Uh, where COVID hit. Um, and then that whole dream just completely disappeared because then all the gyms closed. You can't even train for swimming. Um, and only when, when we met and picked things up again, we needed a challenge. We mm. needed something to do. Yeah. I wanted to do the Ironman, but that was only in a year's time. Mm. And um, then I just got reminded about the Robben Island crossing. And that became the challenge that yeah. we were going to film, that we we're going to talk mm. about. Because we needed a, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, mm. but like a highlight exactly yeah. in that, this document that we need to work towards yeah. yes so Stephen, tell me what was what what what, uh, what attracted you on the, to the story like to tell the story what, what was the thing I, that I, th I think it's just the i mean if you if you if you know all my now in person yeah there's something about him that that just it's it's um about never giving up yeah i mean being in a in a wheelchair that doesn't mean that that um, your life can't continue. I mean, you need to find different ways mm. now to continue. You need to find different challenges. And I think that's, that's something that you always tr try and do is, you know, you try and set yourself challenges yeah. to work towards. You're actually trying to show people that, listen, whatever you dream can come true. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that I'm in a wheelchair doesn't mean that that's the end of my story. Yeah. This is actually where I start to write my story now. Mm. Um, and, you know, when people watch the documentary, they will actually see that swimming from Robben Island, you know, um, I mean, it's, it's, we had our challenges. Yeah. There, there were times when we thought it's never going to happen. Oh, you yes. know, and up until the day, almost. Up until that day. And I knew all about that, but I, I couldn't tell you that. Yeah. I mean, because you need to be mentally prepared for that. Yeah. Um, but it was such an awesome journey. I mean, it's um, I, I'll, uh, Neil is on his jet ski as well that day. I mean, he saved the day. Can you remember? <laughs> yeah, the, the seas was too rough for them to come out. Yeah. So uh, Adrian, thank you, Adrian, for yeah. for um, yeah, for that. He, he, Adrian Peterson went on a jet ski and he brought each crew member out to the beach. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, just and so we can yeah. film because yeah, the sea to, was to so rough. From the, you know, from the beach perspective of coming out of the water. Yes, yeah. Otherwise, you would have been on the boat and yeah. just see my, the crew my was backside stuck. Yeah. coming out of the water. Yeah, yeah. The, the crew was stuck in the seawater. Yeah, we'll so. be on the rubber duck and there goes Alvin and we'll be like, okay, Alvin, congratulations. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. The, the, the funny thing is, you know, like these little details that it was so important that mm. Adrian was there helping the guys out, helping the crew out. Mm. Didn't you put a camera in a plastic bag as well? The, yeah, the, 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 we, we actually it? to protect it from the waves because yeah. it was uh, rough seas. It was. But yeah. like, you know, small details like, like that. Um, initially, the plan was that you were never even supposed to be on a jet ski. Yeah. And that was a debate within the, the team. Yeah, you I know, remember. Th things like this, you know, and, and Nielus was just at me. He said, yeah. no, guys, I am gonna I'm go going on that jet ski. <laughs> I will be there. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to be on a boat or I'm not going to wait on shore. Yeah. Thank God you were on jet, <laughs> that jet ski. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, we would yeah, have been in trouble. So, yeah, just uh, like for me, the whole, just to see you do that uh, 7 uh, to it's just, just for me and so, so inspiring because I, I thought like, yeah, I mean, you were in open seas, yeah. it's yeah. rough, it's like, and you just stuck through it. But yeah, at the end of the day, you made it and we were like so, so glad yeah. uh, because the story, the ins the, uh, when, you, when you watch this documentary, you'll just be so inspired by just seeing him following the dream and, and mm. how the Lord just spoke to him and said, listen, you're going to finish strong. Mm. I, I think it's just important to mention this mm. one thing, like, and y you'll see it in the documentary, and I always lay an emphasis on this. I'm not someone that used to swim. After my accident, I learned to swim because God put this on my heart to do the challenge. Yeah. And I think it's very important because when God gives you a dream, you, you need to partner with God. You know, it's said of Abraham that he believed God and was counted to him as righteousness. So the fact is that when, when God put it on my heart, I just believed him said, okay, Lord, this is, this is what you said. This yeah. is, we're going to do it. And the rainbow also signifies God's faithfulness to fulfill 100%. a promise. Amen. Amen. Um, and that was why it was so significant to us. We knew that God's hand is on this documentary. Mm. Mm. Um, and that's, it's, it's such a, mm. a beautiful testimony to share mm. how this documentary, how everything came together, how to get the funds yeah. for filming these things. It's, yeah. it's definitely not a a cheap venture no definitely but i also want to add to that is that if god lays something on your heart yeah i mean it doesn't mean it's going to be easy absolutely because you will see in the documentary it it, it didn't come easy i mean the, yeah. we had many challenges but i mean that's that's also i think maybe god testing you to see whether you you are strong enough and you are willing enough to trust him you know to do this God spoke to you uh, many times, and and, yeah. uh, and if you guys can follow his YouTube channel, mm. uh, Alvin Ace, this stuff, uh, after the documentary, there was just stuff happening, started happening, um, just share a little bit of that, and and just where you, your head is at um, with your ministry, because yeah. I, I've been th uh, filming a lot of these events, uh, let's call it healing sessions, and and God's just busy using you in such a remarkable way. Let's, let's chat about your YouTube channel for a, for a bit. Yeah, so it's the, the funny thing is when, when I started doing Iron Man and the Comrades and Swimming Robin Island, and I really love it. Um, it's something that the Lord has put in my heart. I just love these challenges. I love, I love sport. I love training. I love being active. Um, and you'll see all of that in the documentary. And always, I, I thought and understood that, you know, we're all searching for purpose and calling. And I thought that was the main focus, mm. to just focus on that. And I never even considered ministry, you know, sharing testimony, preaching the gospel. Um, and, you know, never even to mention prophetic ministry or healing ministry and deliverance. Um, and then after the, the event, after the swim, doors started opening for ministry um, in inexplainable ways, ways mm. that I had never mm. thought possible. And it's kind of like I discovered this whole new side of how God actually wants to use um, 
this whole life journey, this whole testimony and everything. Mm. Um, so oftentimes we think that we're going down one path and we think that's the main focus. Um, but actually, I found that it's just a stepping stone. Yeah. It's just mm. an avenue. It's just a vehicle of how God is using um, me at this moment for His glory. Yeah. Um, but some interesting things have really been happening since after the swim, I would say. The door started opening. Um, I was always confident in how God speaks to me personally. And I think we all have a relationship with the Lord where you know what He's saying to you, guiding you, directing you in your life. Um, but I never thought that I would actually end up in a ministry of, you know, specifically prophetic ministry or healing ministry. Hmm. And just as you have natural gifts, you also have spiritual gifts. Yeah, yeah. And I want to encourage yeah. everyone to explore every avenue of how God wants to use you, not just with your natural gifts, but also with your spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that I really learned after, yeah. after this massive physical challenge that we did. Yeah. So guys, if you uh, want to be inspired, go to Alvin Ace's uh, YouTube channel. Go check out what the Lord is busy doing in his life. Um, I'm, I'm super excited for what he's going to do even after this documentary. So if you guys want uh, Alvin to come minister to you guys, uh, you can catch him on social media. You can go on the website, alvinace.com. Um, and yeah, for last words from you guys. Um, super excited Friday. Well, um, just tell us when is it airing, um, Stefan? It's airing this Friday, 16th of December. Um, it's on Mnet 101 at 7 o'clock. You really don't want to miss this. Trust me, after you've watched this documentary, you're going to be so inspired. You're going to get off that couch and you're going to reach for all your dreams. Yeah, so thank you for watching and we're very excited and uh, we give Jesus all the glory for what Amen. he's going to do. Amen. Have you ever noticed the ocean? and how it breathes. Surface rising and falling in rhythmic ease. The sun glaring off its surface and the waves showing off its life. A pulse so elegant, yet so powerful. One that can turn on a dime and change a calm ocean to a raging storm. Like life, your life, my life. Everything's so calm the one moment and then the next. So turbulent and unpredictable. Like the ocean, life is very similar in its design. There are many beautiful moments and breathtaking days. We are all born with dreams, hopes and a certain level of ambition to help us achieve those goals. Until the storm hits, everything changes. Life can easily place us in a box and people will often tell us what is and what isn't possible, especially in times when we are searching for answers. The art in overcoming is to silence those voices of the outside world screaming at us, telling you what you can and cannot do. That is their opinion, and not my reality. Because I know that our dreams choose us, we don't choose them. You might think I'm paralyzed, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Your mind is a battlefield. If your mind is paralyzed, your body can't follow. I don't accept to be placed in a box and play with the cards that life has dealt me. I've been given a new dream, new goals, and in this storm, these circumstances, it won't stop me from giving them wings. It's my obligation to let those dreams come alive and take flight. Because everything I ever needed was inside of me all this time. My name is Alvin Ace 
And if I can battle and overcome the storms in my life, so can you. Join me on my journey. Thank you.